lesson on the lovely old tune Swinging Safari and although this was never a hit um, I know this tune really really well from my childhood and I expect you know it as well and uh, it's good fun to play it's very interesting to learn so let's make a start. Let's have a word or two about the timing now it's 2-2 which is called cut common time uh, or half time or playing in twos and uh, a bar of 2-2 two, two looks the same as 4-4, four, four. mathematically it's the same, but it's played at twice the speed. So at the top it says uh, a minim equals 70, in other words there are uh, 70 minims per minute, or if you like 140 crotchets per minute if you were in 4-4. Four, four. So what is the point of doing this? Well it's to get that emphasis, that 1-2, uh, 1-2. One, two, one, two. I'll show you the metronome setting, 1-2. Two, one, two, so we get. So as we get a nice quick tempo, where we don't get a, a piece of music flooded with semiquavers and tricky things to read. Now I've got two versions of the music. I've got this one, which is um, the one I came up with first, which shows everything written as played. But it looks horrible, isn't it? You've got all these dreadful uh, crotchet quaver triplets dotted all over the place. Very hard to read. So I've discounted that and I've gone with uh, one I'm going to use in the lesson. I'll give you both, so it's just out of interest. And you'll see here, it looks a lot easier. And it just says at the top here, uh, two quavers equals crotchet quaver triplet. So if I play this music as written, it would sound like this. <laughs> Which is obviously not what we want, but it looks a lot nicer, doesn't it? A lot easier to to, uh, to look at. And all you've got to do is remember that every time you see two quavers, uh, you count it, you feel it as a crotchet quaver triplet. But I mean, I'm guessing you're going to know this tune anyway, so you probably won't even have to worry about that at all. It's just how we actually get the timing down on paper. So it's pretty sprightly, and we're in the key of G major, so all the uh, notes on the G row have the normal heads and any notes on the D row will have the diamond heads. Like I say, 2-2 two, two, which is cut common time and um, 70 minims per minute. So it's the equivalent of 140 uh, crotchets per minute, like I say. And uh, the first bar you come in on the very final quaver of the bar. So you've got a one, two and then you come in with that D at the end there. Um, so technically it's a pick up bar but I've had to write it out in full so that you can see all the rests there. So you've got a minim rest, uh, then a crotchet rest, then a quaver rest. So you're going to go one, two, and into the, the proper tune. So the first note is simply D. On my fourth button start instrument it's button three. On the push it might be a button two for you if you've got a third button start. But you start on the push, no chord, in position minus one. 
Position home is where the first finger is on the root note, G. Position minus one is one up from that. And there's our first note, the D. Somebody contacted me the other day uh, through my website and said they're having trouble fitting the left and the right together. I replied, learn one hand until it's automatic and then think about the other hand. And you might have to do that with this. Now, probably the left hand's easier because it's just a basic oompa, oompa. The clever stuff comes in the right hand, so maybe uh, make sure the left hand is automatic and think about the right hand. And lots of slotting, lots of interlocking involved with this gym, which is really good practice, especially if you're a beginner. The first proper bar sounds like this. So that sounded a bit weird because I ended in mid-air. Let's play two bars for you. And then you have to go on into bar four. So it's a very distinctive pattern um, and the timing, like I say, as written is but we give it that swing. And I'm not going to say too much more about the timing. Obviously listen to it, feel the timing. Yes, you can count it. You can look at the other version, which is written out accurately as, it's, as it sounds but it's a bit hard to read. Just listen and copy. I mean, a lot of people don't use sheet music at all, of course. Uh, when I play the guitar, I very rarely ever use music. Um, maybe tablature sometimes if it's an intricate picking thing. It's really good to learn it by ear is what I'm saying. So in that first bar, right hand, we've got this. Now everything on the push part from the last note, so it's G, B, D, G, B, E. That final note is on the D row, hence the diamond head. It's the E. It's the only place we can get that E on the conventional uh, D, G melodeon. On the D row, on the pull. And the bass line is just simply G bass, G chord, G bass, G chord. Fingers four and three I use. You can use uh, two and three or one and two. I use three and four because it's more logical. So that's... And make sure when you play that final E on the right hand that there is no bass. Now when you do that E, you're changing positions, position home, because the first finger is on uh, what we call the root button of this row. If I were to push and play that button, I have a D, see D row, I'm pulling, so it's E. 